everybody, a warm welcome to Wisdom from North, the place where we're diving into the deeper meaning of life and asking the big questions. My name is Janneke and today I'm in Copenhagen and I'm sitting next to Baptiste du Pap, who is the author of the amazing book, The Power of the Heart, that has been sold to over 80 countries. And also he's the man behind the film, The Power of the Heart, which is an amazing film where he has interviewed people like uh, Paolo Coelho, Neil Donald Wall, Deepak Chopra and many many others. Hello Baptiste, how are you? Great, thank you so much for having me on your uh, show. I'm a fan so thanks for having me. Well that's nice to hear and I've interviewed you before but yes. we're here because you are doing a workshop yes. that's called Manifesting from the Soul and uh, I wanted to be part of that and you are perhaps coming to Oslo to do the same workshop mm -hmm. with Ibora Zant. And it's a fascinating topic because you're speaking a lot about following the intuition and manifesting from uh, your heart. And the title Manifesting from the Soul I thought was interesting. And I, I'm thinking we can start there. Mm. What does that actually mean, manifesting from the soul? Well, first of all, we have to understand what the relationship is between the heart and the soul. So. I think the heart is the seat of the soul. So the heart is the place where we receive the messages from the soul. If you look at the signs of intuition, and Hartmet has shown this beautifully in the opening of the film, you see that the heart is actually receiving the intuitive information from the soul, and the heart is sending it to the brain, and then we experience it in the rest of our body. So that's the first thing. A lot of people start to realize after seeing the power of the heart that the heart really has an intelligence that far surpasses that of the mind. And what they want to do is they want to know how can I manifest from this intelligence and this wisdom. So that's manifesting from the soul, manifesting from the wisdom and intelligence of your soul. Hmm. And you spoke about that intention is very important. Yes. Can you speak a little bit about the relationship between intuition and intention? Um, it's a very important relationship. In the book, The Power of the Heart, I really talk about, and this is in chapter 9 of the book, the relationship between intention and intuition. If you look at, for instance, The Secret, and everybody has seen The Secret, The Secret is about the law of attraction. And in this film, they teach you basically how you can attract into your life what you want to attract. But I think we have to go to a deeper level first and ask ourselves, if we want to attract something into our lives, where is this intention coming from? Is the intention coming from our personality, our ego? Or is the intention coming from our higher self, our soul, our divine part? Because we also have a divine part, which I call the soul. And this divine part knows what our element is. This divine part knows what our purpose is. And this divine part knows what the gifts are that we want to give to this world. So intention, if you want to use it powerfully, has to come from the soul. And the intention has to come from our divine self. So a powerful way to ask and to identify the intention of our soul is to ask ourselves, what does the soul want? What does my heart want? Or Eckhart Tolle would say, what does life want from me? And if we start to ask those questions, and we find answers to those questions, then we start to co-create with the universe. We start to co-create with um, the part of us that is divine. And what we start to experience then is synchronicities. And synchronicities are those moments when we start to realize that something bigger is supporting us, that there's power, there's meaning, and there's purpose behind everything we do. So we become co-creators, and we're not doing this alone, we are co-creating with the universe and we start to feel that we are being carried, we are being supported by something bigger. So that's why it's so important to first identify the intentions of the soul and not to just um, find the intentions, uh, uh, intentions from our personality. Do you think that life actually supports us all the time? It's just that we're not aware of it? Yes. So life is teaching us all the time. Life is supporting us all the time. But sometimes life, um, we don't see the support and the synchronicities of life. And the reason is that we are not connected to our heart and our intuition. It, uh, synchronicities and support happen all the time. But when we are not in the place where we can actually see it, 
we can't use it. So synchronicities and support is happening all the time. But when we are completely in fear, when we're in our mind, when we're disconnected from our aliveness, we don't see the support anymore. It's like having uh, your eyes closed and trying to see the road. If you close your eyes, you can drive on the road. And when we come into our heart, all of a sudden, we start to see. And with seeing, I really mean seeing through the eyes of the soul. And what intuition really is, is seeing with the soul. So tell us a little bit how this knowledge has changed your life. Because you were a lawyer, or you never actually ended up working as a lawyer, but you were educated as one. Uh, when you learned this information, how did it change your life from what it was before? Well, um, the first thing that you start to realize is that you have access to an incredible intelligence. The intelligence of the heart really far surpasses that of the mind. And people always want to know, okay, how, what is the difference between the heart and the mind? The heart sees everything from a larger perspective. So if you are on a boat on a river, and I'm using this example to give a clearer... Did you say the heart sees everything from, from the logical? From a high, higher perspective. Oh, yeah. Higher perspective. So to give an example, if you are on a boat on a river and you are the mind, the mind only sees the next bend, the next turn on the river. But if you are the heart, you see the whole river from source to sea. So you start to see everything from source to sea, everything from a higher perspective. So the problem is the mind doesn't trust the heart and we can only do that if we start experimenting with it, right? The more you experiment, the more you give your brain permission to believe in the intelligence of the heart. So this is very important that we start to understand this intelligence first. Then the second step is if you start to trust it and you start to work with it, it increases confidence because you know you have a golden treasure of information inside of you. Uh, you start to have more foresight. You start to have more insight into life. You start to recognize what your element and your purpose is. You start to discover your qualities and you also start to discover how the soul communicates to you so you start to discover the language of your intuition it's very important to understand that it also helps you to manifest more powerfully and that's what i'm talking about in manifesting from the soul because if you identify the intentions of the soul because you understand the language of the soul and the language of the heart, then you really know what its intentions are and you start to work together with intentions and you don't fight it anymore. But how did it change your life? It increased my confidence, first of all, like I said, and it also uh, helped me to just work with life instead of fighting against life. Mm -hmm. And it helped me to really see my purpose, why I'm here, and um, it, 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 it gave me an access to an intelligence and an insight into how the soul communicates to me. So in your everyday life, do you have any examples on how you actually listen to the heart, like an everyday example of how it can help you or us? The best way to listen to the heart is to bring your conscious awareness to your heart. Just put your hand on your heart, breathe in appreciation into your heart hold it there for a moment and breathe it out the more attention you bring to your heart the more you start to listen to it put all your energy in your heart bring your attention there and just start to feel your way in it's not a thinking process it's just feeling your way into your heart so the fastest way is just to feel your heart become aware of your heart and start to spend more time with your heart so um we, we had a talk yesterday uh, during dinner and we spoke that a lot about that some people are using this and p even people in the government, but uh, it's actually like a skill that more people should know. We should actually know it, like have an intuition school that we can go to that I know you have. Uh, can you speak a little bit about that? I mean, are there people like using this in governments around the world? Like this uh, extrasensory techniques that you are kind of teaching here? Um, many people are using it um, and everybody can learn it. Not everybody has the same gift. It's like not everybody's a Mozart or not everybody's a Roger Federer in tennis. Not everybody's a Picasso. But with intuition, it's the same thing. Some people have a, you know, a gift for it and other people have to work at it a little bit more. Yes, I mean, it's being used all over. Uh, yes, and governments are using it too. Um, the thing is, you have to learn the language of your intuition first. It's like when I speak, do you speak Italian? 
No. No, when I speak Italian to you, parla italiano, non ancora, è la mia prima lezione. The thing is, you don't understand the language, right? So if you don't understand the language, you're not able to listen to what I have to say and to understand it and to use uh, to, to use the, the information. So this is a language which is universal. If you start to learn it, then you can start to apply it, use it, and identify the intentions of your soul. So your soul has a language, you can learn it, and um, that's uh, what we do in the intuition school. Uh, so talk a little bit about the science actually behind intuition. Is there any scientific uh, research sure. on intuition? Yes. So for those who have not seen the Power of the Heart film, it opens with an experiment done by the uh, research institute HeartMed in Northern California, and they show that the heart actually can see events before the eyes can see it. You have seen the film, so you've seen this experiment. The heart knows what's going to happen before the eyes can see it. And that's incredible. The only thing is we don't know how to bring this information that we have here to our conscious awareness so we can use it. So this is a scientific exp explanation for how, how our intuition works. And this experiment has been done in many independent laboratories all over the world. So we just know that the heart receives the information before we, the eyes can see it. Um, this was for me a big eye-opener and revelation and I said this is what I want people to show because this gives them, this gives the brain permission to believe in the intelligence of the heart. Are you practicing this every day? Is it an ongoing thing? Maya Angelou said every day you have to go to the heart, every day you have to work at it, every day you say teach me and what I know is when I wake up in the morning I just want my coffee and I'm not thinking about the heart, I really have to make a conscious decision to go there. So the first step is really to make it a priority. And you can pray, you can go into nature, you can look for silence, you can dance, you can make music, you can spend time with animals or with little children. All those things that bring you into the heart, that's what you need to do. And for everybody it's different. You have to find your way to connect with your heart, but you have to make it a conscious decision and a priority. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen by itself. It actually uh, enhances your psychic skills, doesn't it? I mean, is it really possible to look into the future, like through the heart? Yes, I mean, the heart med science is showing that, right? That we, we, we can look into the future. It doesn't mean that the future is set in stone, but we can see high probabilities into the future, yes. Hmm. We, we are able to see into the future, and at the same time, we're also able to create the future. Because we're co-creating at the same yes. time. Yes, so it is a circle of creating and observing and observation and creation starts to influence each other like a circle. So what about the mind chatter? How do we deal with that? What is your perspectives on mind chattering? Is it something we should um, try to get rid of or silence? Um, mental noise, I call it mental noise. So we have on one hand we have the soul, the signal line of the soul and we have the mental noise. Which one is louder, you think? The mental noise. The mental noise is louder because we have been feeding it with our education. We are taught to live from our mind. So what we do, it's like a radio channel. You want to turn down the mental noise. And you want to turn up the signal line of the soul. So it takes some time to do that. It's like an old radio. You're tuning in. You can't just shut it down, the mental noise. You have to learn to manage it. And you do that through uh, looking for silence and looking for ways to connect with the heart. So you look for silence. You try to bring yourself into the body and you start to learn the language. The more you learn the language, and I cannot explain that you know, in this interview, but the more you learn the language, the more you start to see, okay, this is my intuition and this is my mental noise. But the mental noise is so loud and we have to learn to manage it and turn it down. A way to do it is to write down what the mental noise is saying. And another problem is that a lot of people don't know the difference between their mental noise and their intuition. And that's also something that you need to learn. What is the voice of the mental noise? What is the voice of the intuition? And you learn that by noticing it, I guess. That's yes. for the first step, to yes. notice like, okay, now I have mind chatter. But you can't always write it down. But I guess you should put some time and now I'm going to, you know, yeah. practice this yes. because in your everyday life, you don't have time to write down 
It's just like, you know, if, if you want to stay healthy, you stay on a healthy diet. If you want to learn a language, you go to a school or you do a course to learn the language. Um, with intuition, it's the same thing. If you want to learn it, you make it a priority. If you don't want to learn it, okay, then you're not going to learn it, right? I mean, you if, if you if you want to stay in shape, you have to go to the gym. If you want to learn the language of intuition, you have to make a conscious effort to do it. You created a huge success with this book. Uh, it seems like you created something out of, you know, nothing at first. Like uh, you just had an idea of making a movie. You had no experience with making a movie. Uh, how w was it the certainty that this was your purpose that made it happen in a way? I'm just curious on how you managed to manifest all these beautiful things, all these interviews with the ones you have, have in your film, all, you know, the books been sold to 80 countries, it's pretty huge. Was it a, a certainty that made this easier? Yeah, well, I always say that, um, well, Tony Robbins talks about it. Tony Robbins, we all know him, biggest guru in self-development, actually. And he says, um, the one thing that decides if you're going to be successful or not is certainty. Certainty is an inside job. If you want something and you want it from your soul, which is the only place where you can know things certain because it's your real identity. If you want something in your heart, if you want something from your heart, then you become unstoppable. A lot of people say, hmm, maybe I want it, maybe not, I'm going to try it. If that's your energy, you will not do it. But if you know inside, this is my certain vision, I have complete clarity of what I want, then you become unstoppable and then you will manifest it in the real world. What happens? If you have complete clarity and certainty, what do you do? Do you take a lot of action or just a little bit of action? If you have complete certainty, a lot of action. Yes, Be yes, you, yeah. because you have certainty inside. Although people say you cannot do it, your certainty is stronger. Take a lot of action. What happens if you have take a lot of action? Do you have results or not? Results. Yes, so, okay, then you have the results. So what happens if you have the results? Then you have a reinforcement about your potential. So what happens with your certainty about what you can do, it becomes bigger, and then your certainty is even bigger, you even take more action, and then results become even bigger. You see it a lot, for instance, with Brad Pitt. Are you, do you like Brad Pitt? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Brad Pitt. <laughs> what, what is his breakthrough film? Uh, I don't know. Was it Seven Years in Tibet? No, I think I'm not tell, sure. Tell my and Louise, right? Tell oh, my and Louise, okay. the first one. Yeah. Okay, so it's really hard to get that breakthrough, right? Mm -hmm. But then once he was at the level of Tell my and Louise, he became this big superstar. So the first thing is... The first time is the hardest, but once he had that success, he was in this cycle of certainty where he believed he could do more, he took more action, and then he had more results, more bigger movies, and then more enforcement about his potential. So the first time is always the hardest one. You see it a lot with successful people. The breakthrough moment is hard, and then they can stay on this level or go even higher. The more success you have, the more certain you become about your potential. But you had a very clear vision, like w we've spoken about this yes. uh, in another interview that yes. we have, and yes. I'm going to put the link here. Uh, but you just knew all of a sudden, like your heart burst open, we're not going to take the whole story, but you knew that you were going to um, explore the power of the heart, and you got like a message that you were going to make a film. Yes. Do you think that we all have these clear purposes if we only listen? Or yes. do you think that some of us, like you, have like bigger no, no. No, so purposes? I'm not talking about doing big, incredible things. I'm talking about honoring the whisper, honoring the call. And it can be something in your own community. As long as you have life, you have purpose, okay? So the only thing is, and Mark Nepo says it beautifully, you've interviewed Mark Nepo, a fish cannot drown in water, a bird cannot fall from the sky, each creature must find their own God-given element. Mm. And we cannot find our element through thinking. We can only find our element when we come into the heart. So if you don't know what your element is, then your job is to create alignment with your heart. If you make that a priority, your intuition will give you your element. But only your intuition knows it. The blueprint of what your element is is in your heart, it's in your intuition. So when the heart opens, 
when it really opens, your purpose will be revealed automatically. What made the biggest impression on you interviewing all these different beautiful spiritual teachers? Um, the humility of all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, they were all very humble and I think really big people know, really successful people know that it's not them, but it's the energy, the aliveness, the soul working through them, the divine working through them that really does all the work for them. So they are humble to divinity and I say humility to divinity provide certainty um, so you know if you are humble and if you say use me let life work through me make me a vessel of what you want what do you want me to do and you see it with very successful people like Oprah Winfrey she was born in Mississippi most races stayed at the time as poor as you can be without having a roof over your head she said I don't have a lot to live for she said it at a very early age and she said I don't have a lot to live for, but God use me. And I think this is an explanation for her big success. She was able to let the divine work through her, and this explains her big success. And that's why she became such an influence for good in this world, because the divine is working through her, and she was not resisting it, and she was not asking questions from her personality or ego, but she was listening to the divine. So you're actually talking about surrendering. Yes. Can you speak a little I'm bit about, about that? Service. I'm talking about what does life want me to do? Mm -hmm. If you want to find your purpose, ask what does life want me to do? How can I serve? And then the universe opens up to you when you ask this from a pure heart, of course. And for people now trying this, will it happen right away? I mean, will it get the answer right away? There's a saying. And well, it's not a saying. Yeah, it's a saying. It says, when a student is ready, the teacher will appear. When you are ready, when you've done the inner work, the alignment, then it will come to you. If you get the inside right, the outside will fall into place. Life is an inside job. There's a saying in the Bible, I think Jesus said it, seek first the kingdom of heaven within, seek first the kingdom of heaven within, and then all else will be added on to you. So if you f and if you look at the Bible, it was written in Aramaic originally. In Aramaic, kingdom of heaven means awareness so f seek first awareness and then all else will be added on to you so if you connect with this divine intelligence then this divine intelligence will give you all the things you need so it's a matter also of a trust it's a matter of alignment with your soul and then from there on you will trust because the energy is so strong you know it when you know when you have something that you love so much when you have this big energy of joy, when you feel like you've come home, when you feel like this inner certainty, like this is it, and it speaks to you in energy, you know it, oh, I love this so much. This makes me feel good, I feel home, this is my element, that's it. Even though if it can be hard work sometimes and difficult and you still love it, do you think it's like also about never giving up? It's about listening. If things are not flowing, it means that you have to adjust, okay? It's like, you know, if you go to the gym, how do you grow muscle? The tissue has to break down first for a bigger muscle to grow. And it's also how the heart beats. The heart contracts and then it opens. So it is the play of life. We have to go through experiences to become who we are. A diamond becomes a diamond under pressure, right? So we need the pressure for the full force, the power come out. Most people become successful and become aligned with their heart when they are in a crisis situation. You see it in the power of the heart. All the people are in a crisis situation. They don't ask to be in the heart. They are put into the heart because life forces them into the heart. So the crisis is actually your doorway to the heart. Without the crisis, you would not transform. So everything that's dark is actually amplifying the light in you. So you never attack the darkness, you always amplify the light. So all the negative experiences are making you stronger. That's really beautiful because it's really important because sometimes we can lose faith because yes. negative things are happening. And I have the experience when I interview people that a lot of people have this big opening after something um, awful is happening to them and I, I remember I asked Lars Mule about this how do you open your heart well he's like well you gotta uh, be heartbroken or something bad has to happen to you but I was like but can't you make it without that happening <laughs> it doesn't have to but this is how it works 
the mental noise is very loud. The personality is very loud. And we don't listen to it because it, the heart whispers. The heart whispers. But if you don't listen to the heart, it comes to you screaming in your face mm. in the form of a crisis situation. If you have a crisis, it happened because you didn't listen to your heart. You think so? Yes. Huh. Yeah. Well, I got a personal experience with that. My father was hit by a car uh, in South Africa. And wow, I've never felt this strong love for my family. It was horrifying, but at the same time, I've felt this huge love. Like I, I've never knew I had so much love inside. And I guess my heart was cracked open, but I, I kind of thought it was open from before. But I guess I was maybe going deeper. Yes. So I have to correct myself. If you have a crisis, it is maybe because you didn't listen to your heart, but it's also a life that wants to push you to the next level, mm. to a deeper level of love and understanding, compassion, reverence for life, mm. and insight. Yeah. Because also why we're here is learning how to open our heart so yes. we can also do it consciously, right? Yes. yes, and the heart is not supposed to be open all the time. Oh. No, because people say, oh, I want to be in love all the time. No, <laughs> it's how the heart beats. It contracts and then it opens. If a heart is not open, it's our job to open it again. It's the play of life. It's part of life. People who want to be in love all the time, they don't understand life. Life is a play between darkness and light. And we need both in order to have a full experience of ourselves. Okay. So I guess that's part of being a human being, yes. that actually our normal condition is not having our heart open no, all the time. No, because people, miss, they, they, they live in a fairy tale if they think it's like that. It's not like that. Nobody lives like that. Okay. Yeah. But the job is for us yeah, to, to open it again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Do you have some last words for us today? Yes. Well, if you haven't seen The Power of the Heart, I would look, like to invite you to watch the film. The website is thepoweroftheheart.com. Uh, please watch the film um, because I think the film really is a heart opening experience. Mm -hmm. And um, I always want to say to people, people say, Listen, I'm in the heart, but my husband is not, or my boyfriend is not. I say to them, don't wish it was easier, wish you were better. Be the change you want to see in the world. If you want to change the world, start with yourself, because you only have control over yourself. That's really beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Janneke. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching, guys. Remember to subscribe to, to my channel if you haven't before. Much light from Copenhagen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.